It is our pleasure to be joined by two rock stars that are also massive OU football fans. Jared Followell and Caleb Followell of Kings of Leon are in the house. New album is coming out May 10th. New single is dropping on the 22nd. Boys, how we doing? Doing good, man. Very excited to be here. This is awesome. Yeah, thanks for having us. We're going to talk music. Are we gonna, we're going to talk music first, right? That's our plan? Oh, yeah. We can, but I, I want to just start by saying, like, I've done a lot of interviews. Doesn't matter if it's, you know, your 60 minutes or if we were talking to Oprah or whatever. Not that we've ever done that. But this right here is, like, this is the most special to me because I watch you guys all the time. When y'all gave me a birthday shout out, it was, like, I just walked around the house, my kids, I had like highlight tapes of y'all. I was like, look, that's him. (laughs) He said my name. So this is cool, man. Well, hey, that that means a lot to us. Okay, that's awesome that you guys uh, listen. And we knew someone was out there listening. We weren't sure who it was, (laughs) but we knew they were out there. If there's two less listeners this week, it's because me and Caleb are here (laughs) doing it. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, I expect you guys to listen to your own episode, okay? Just oh, we, yeah. we, you you got to keep helping us out. Now, I do not know a lot about music. I certainly do not know a lot about putting an album together. So that's where I want to start. What was the process like for you guys starting working on this album? Like do you just go to each other and go, okay, time to start working on it? Or what? what is the catalyst to start working on a new album, especially this one in particular? Oh, man, it's, it's always a little different. Um, there's just kind of like a little bit of a seed that starts to be planted. Um, and usually whenever I have a few ideas together and I'm feeling good about it, I'll call the guys and say like, Hey, let's, I want to show you guys some stuff. Um, and sometimes they like it. Sometimes they don't. Um, but January of last year, we had done a tour in Australia and I had like some ideas kicking around. And so we got home from Australia and did the holidays and the songs were kind of, I felt something special different than what we've had before. Um, and I called Jared and I was like, come over to the house. I want to uh, show you some stuff. And so he came to the house and I played him a couple of ideas. I don't even know if any of them actually made the album because it was so early in the process. Um, and then just called the other guys and booked like a little cottage and said, let's go get together. Let's go record one song. And as soon as we got in there, we kind of knew like, oh, we're doing an album. And it was I don't know, man. It was a it was a different experience than previously because we kind of went into it saying, like, all right, we're all gonna go for something here. We're going for greatness. We're not gonna stop until we get there. Being in a band, you already have a, a bond like no other. Being brothers, you have a bond like no other. And I told him, I was like, guys, if we all focus on the same goal who can stop us no one can stop us we are we have so many things working in our favor all we have to do is just commit to something and we all committed and the process was enjoyable we loved it we were working until the last second it was like no we got more songs we want to keep going we want to keep going um and it was just a special time and I think you'll be able to hear it in the music. There's something, uh, something you know, more to this than than albums in the past. Where do you think that comes from? Is it? I know music is what you're listening to has a tendency to maybe show up in in what you play. There's you know you get a bunch of influences from everywhere. Is there something maybe that changed you? opened up to something new and, and got a different creative process going? Um, it was a little bit different this time. Cause we were kind of, um, we did our first seven 
eight albums with uh, a, a label that we were with. And then this one, we were kind of in between, like in a little purgatory world. So we went in differently, but uh, there was no, there wasn't as much pressure because we didn't really have to do it. Normally it's like, okay, we got to go make an album and you know you get one song this one we were like let's go make a song and we got an album um but no it, it, you you try to link up before the album comes so we'll try to get on the same musical page and talk about stuff we're listening to and we share playlists around with each other and you know caleb had a, a bulk uh, he had like a lot of stuff built up and so i went over there and listened to a lot of it and then you know, we'll all have, like Matthew will have a couple little guitar ideas that when we get in the rehearsal space, that might blossom into a song or a couple of bass ideas that might blossom into a song. Um, but yeah, we, it wasn't necessarily that different this time around, except for just a lot less pressure. You know, we weren't going in. Yeah, there was, I feel like there was what he's saying, the less pressure. I agree with him, but there's also like the fact that we were kind of free agents or whatever and we were doing it for ourselves i did feel a different kind of pressure but it wasn't an outside pressure it was a uh, all right let's show people what we can do mm -hmm. let's we've got 20 years under our belt of experience we've done it all we've seen the highs we've seen the lows um let's put it all together but one time let's just put it all together and just go and give it everything that we've got and i read this book about creativity and it really opened me up and so i got jared a copy nathan matt our producer i was giving out copies like i wrote the book um <laughs> it's called the artist way um, but you read it and it's kind of like one of those books where you read and then you apply it and then you read a little more and you apply it. And it just opened this childlike wonder in me. And I was like seeing things differently, like the struggles of the world and all of the crap that we all deal with. It all just kind of made sense in a different way. And I, I, I don't know, it just opened me up to kind of want it, want to embrace the reality of the situation um and just kind of I, I don't know it, it was like a weird thing it was just one of those things where i felt like a kid in a candy store and everyone jumped on and we just had this thing where we were finishing each other's sentences you know, that kind of stuff <laughs> and it it, uh, it was just happening and clicking and it still is mm -hmm. um Definitely caused a lot of synchronicities and just weird, weird stuff that just kept popping up. And I, I think that that's a real thing, you know, and we're all reading the same things and doing kind of like the same uh, exercises every day and morning pages. We would all write three pages. We turned into some weird hippies, but it did get the vibrations real good. I'm going to wait till after the spring game so I can see who's all on the roster and I'm getting a copy for everyone on the team. <laughs> so I love it. Like we're going to natty. We're going natty. First year in the SEC. We'll, we'll get there, boys. Don't worry. We'll get to the OU football stuff. But a, f a few more dumb music questions before that. So, Jared, you and I, you're one of my closest friends. You're the best man in my wedding. And this is by far the most excited I've ever seen you for new music. What what has you so excited about this album? Um, I don't know, man. It just felt good. It felt different. the The whole process just felt like very light and not heavy and not dark. Um, I don't know. It's it's really hard to explain. I think uh, we we worked with a new producer and he brought in a lot of you know positivity and just. It, it, the guy is really good too you know like and he he kind of just massaged us and brought out things in us that we haven't done in a long time um and just he, he was just on board super on board with everything we wanted to do anything we wanted to try he didn't say no he didn't make you feel you know uh, any kind of way um and I don't know it just feels like there's we got some songs you know it feels like 
it, 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 with you guys, it's like, you know, when you have a good team and you're excited and you know, before the, you know, it's fall camp, you're like, this could be something you don't want to hype it up too much, but there could be something here. This could be a big year. And you just feel, you yeah, know, the vibrations were very high. Mm-hmm. Like we were, we were buzzing like on the way to work. And it was Nashville in the winter time is not the most beautiful. It's like sleepy hollow, dark, low hanging fog. And we were driving to the studio every day. And I mean, it was one of those things where I would hear a song, instantly be inspired by it, apply it, go in there, boom, we would have a song come from it. And then the next week, I would hear that song and be like, oh, I don't even get that anymore. Mm-hmm. It was just like it it was a source of inspiration. Boom, used it, done away with it, next one. It was, it was, it was, a spe- I will say, I have children, I have a beautiful wife, amazing life, but it was definitely core memory, one of the greatest periods of my life was making this album. Wow, that's that's awesome. I'm I'm anxious to to see like explain to us the difference maybe I don't know you guys have done a bunch of albums. I don't is there a different producer on all of them like how does that affect the sound that you guys want and sometimes maybe a producer has their thumb on different parts of it and maybe you end up with something that was different than what you first envisioned but it sounds like that wasn't the case here at all. No, um, early on, we worked with a a dear friend of ours, um, and we did a few albums where he was a part of it, either producing, co-producing or something. And then we, we moved on to another producer, amazing producer. And I feel like the period, um, that we were working with him, maybe I can speak only of myself, but, um, just I wasn't there, you know, I wasn't a hundred percent. I was kind of doing my thing and doing what it took to get by. Um, but before we started this album, before we had even decided if we were gonna use a kid harpoon to produce the album, um it was one of those things where I looked at the guys and I said, for the first time ever, I was like, I don't care who produces this. I really don't think anyone's going to mess this up. I feel like whoever we go with, they're going to feel what we are feeling and it's going to be a success. Even if it's just a success as far as the process, you know, I felt like this is, this is one of those things where we are in control of our own destiny right now. And then we brought him in and it was on top of that. It was like, oh, wow. And this guy's bringing the juice. You know, this is, it was just like, there was just a youthful thing. We didn't get caught up on stuff. We didn't let like a little obstacle slow us down. It was like, all right, boom, next one. Put that on the back burner. We'll come back to it if it's still making us feel something then we'll work on it and it was seriously up until the last up until the last seconds it was like all right we have one more idea let's go try one more thing and right at the end there were two songs that really put a bow on it and made us all go all right it's complete now let's keep moving on to the next thing obviously uh kid harpoon is hot right now when you look at what grammy for album of the year last year with harry styles won record of the year with miley cyrus this year uh, at this year's grammys is that something that affects the way that you guys collaborate with him knowing that he's he's got those skins on the wall or is were you just so confident in what you were doing that you didn't even really think about that because I, I just there's a difference if a a coach that is walk that walks in this one two national titles is saying something versus a guy that hasn't that's just kind of I, I think that's just human nature 
did that affect this process at all for you guys, knowing that he's had the success that he's had recently? So we had agreed or, or like not agreed. Uh, we, we had talked with him and we were going to make music with him or, or uh, you know, do at least a song or a few songs. And that was in January of 23. So after we had already signed on and were in communication, sending stuff back and forth, he went to the Grammys, swept with Harry. And we're like, oh, that's awesome, dude. You know, good for kid. Um, hopefully he doesn't, you know, walk in thinking he's better than us. But um, <laughs> we did we did have him widen the uh, doorway to get his head through. But, <laughs> <laughs> but no, so then when we were working with him too, he was our, he was writing some of the stuff that won Grammys this year. Um, but it, no, so it didn't really come into play, but it, it is awesome. It's great just because, you know, he's riding a big wave and having somebody who's riding a big wave in there with you positive, his vibrations are super high. It kind of makes you all like, yeah, this is awesome. You know, we felt like we we're riding a big wave. He's riding one. Let's combine the waves in a little tsunami. I see what you uh, did there. <laughs> How does so? Have you guys heard some stuff that he had produced or or written or been on before and thought, hey, that's like how does how does this interaction start where he ends up, you know, being the producer? What was the genesis of that? I, I didn't know anything that he had done, um, but I don't know anything that anyone has really done. Um, I'm very behind, like uh, one of the bands that I was like listening to and getting really inspired. Um, I was looking through, so it's 2024 now, we have a television appearance coming up and I was kind of bored and I was like, all right, well, let's look at like, what were the big records in 94? So I looked and Paul oh, was that a year, my God, from your Pearl Jones to your Weezers to your, uh, everything was 94. I was like, all right, so let's look at, uh, 2004. And then I got to 2014, I was looking at 10 year spans. And then I discovered that the band that was inspiring me so much um, while I was writing is actually from 2014 and they've already broken up. And I was like, oh man, I'm, I'm way behind on stuff. But I always thought Kid was, I knew he produced the Harry stuff, but he also wrote. So I knew he was a songwriter. And that was a thing where I was like, oh man, I don't, I don't want that weirdness, you know, if it's like, He's going to come in and be like, hey, I have a song. Do you guys want to? But he never, that never happened. He kind of came in, knew that it was like, all right, these guys are doing something right here. And I'm going to use my expertise to take it to the next level. And it was a joy. And he's awesome. And hopefully we get to work together again. Um, but yeah, seeing all his successes, like Jared said, it all happened after the fact. Um, so when he did win the Grammys, you know, we still were like, Hey, we've got four. So <laughs> <laughs> anyone this year, I'm like, damn it. But if you pull all of ours together, it's like 16. We just all bring them from our houses. <laughs> you, you've got 16 trophies. That that way. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I like that. Now you guys, your album titles, and I don't know. Can we talk about the album title for this one? Oh yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. How hard is it to pick a title with only five syllables time after time after time? You've really put yourself at a corner with that. Sometimes very easy, like the first three, which ha happen to all coincidentally be five syllables. And that's where it kind of came from. Then we cornered ourselves with superstition. Um, and sometimes it's easier than other times. This time, Caleb sent me, pro not exaggerating, I'll, I'll make it like legit, probably about 50 or 60 titles somewhere in there and it would be in bunches and it would be like yes yes like this one that's cool and just kind of yeah if, if we're having a conversation and you say something and you see me like go like oh like a dog it's because i've realized that what you said was five syllables and it's cool hmm. um but i had written down like we were on vacation and my, i was trying to be positive and my wife said something she was like actual nightmare and I was like, okay, let's be positive. I'm what actual daydream. 
Okay, let's <laughs> let's change that narrative, which it ended up being a song on the album, but that was my first album title. And then I felt like as it was coming and I felt like stress of it, I just to myself just went like, can we please have fun? And I wrote that down. And then as we went through all the list, some were cool and some were mysterious, but just kept coming back to, can we please have fun? And I, cause when I said it at the studio, Jared and kid both went like, huh? Um, and it just felt fitting for the time, you know, cause it feels like, you know, every time you try to enjoy yourself, it's like, don't look at your phone because something bad's probably happening. Something's going to bring you down. Um, and I just wanted us to enjoy the process, you know, and I meant like, can we please have fun making this record? Can we please have fun doing what we do? Um, and it was, you know, whenever I said it out loud and I feel like the label people heard it, they all went like, oh, that's good. We can work with that. Yeah, we've always been kind of like serious almost to a fault with like a lot of things and poetic and like only by the night. I think like it, when we came up with that one, it came from like a poem, like a, a it, something kind of silly. Uh, and there was just something silly about this and almost like absurd. And it just reminded me of like talking heads or something back. There was a time in music where it was not so serious and you could kind of like Talking Heads had an album called Cross-Eyed and Painless, you know, just like weird. And we used to be weird. We were very, very weird. And Cross-Eyed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very painful. No, the uh, so it just a, a light hearted kind of thing. It just almost felt like the opposite of what you would expect. And a lot of people are not going to like it. They're, they're going to be like, I don't like the thought of you guys being like, silly or lighthearted like you guys are kind of a serious band and like uh anthemic you know a lot of those words come up but um it was just it just felt cool and it felt right and it puts a different kind of pressure on you when you say something like can we please have fun people go like oh it's going to be a silly fun record this record has more depth than anything we've ever done hmm. it has the peaks and the valleys like nothing we've ever done it has your fun moments i guess but like the lyrics are you know there's some some head scratching things where you listen to it and go like whoa that's you know deep or wow that's can't believe they said that you know um but those bands that he's speaking of that had those kind of albums they backed it up they backed up their silly title with like solid music and that's what we did you know there was nothing about the music that ever felt silly or tongue in cheek or anything. It was always like, we're down to business here, but we're going to enjoy the process. And I think when people hear it, it's going to be their escape. It's going to be that thing that they can go to while the world's burning around them or whatever, and just go like, oh, okay, this, this brings me back. You know, this music does that for me. Mm -hmm. And the album itself allows you to have a title like that. You know, if it was all fun, we would never have done that. So, you know, you see the title, Can We Please Have Fun? And you put on the album and the first song is pretty dark. So it, it, it's going to be it's going to be a fun ride. How about the, the recording? Do you guys record all your albums kind of in the same place? It, like how how is that done? Because you guys have a, a very you know, distinct, unique sound that is definitely you guys. Is that something you aim for every time or just like, how, how does that whole process work? We've done a, a ton of studios, tons. You're always kind of trying to, you know, switch things up and keep the mojo there. Uh, for uh, the what? I was going to say the studio that we chose for this one, it was not because it was a good studio. It was a vibe. The co the little cottage that we had rented to uh, kind of start the initial process, next to it was this big wooden structure. And they're like, oh, yeah, that's the actual studio. And it was like kind of spooky. And like I say, it was like dark hanging clouds. And Jared started playing a bass line. And the first lyrics out of my mouth, I was like, there's a home up on the hillside. And I was 
speaking of the studio and as i said it i knew i was like oh that's where we're gonna make this record and we went in they didn't have the gear we loved it we kind of had to spend money to like make it our own but it was one of those things where it was like this is where it has to happen we felt it the whole process we knew like that was where can we please have fun should be made and then we ended up at the end because we had more songs and kid had to go back to uh la we went to la went to uh what's it called henson studios mm -hmm. and did two more songs so that henson studio we have done we have worked in before but it's it's also just like that's where they recorded we are the world yeah that's having a, a little moment this is charlie chaplin's old studio so there's like there's so so many cool little things about that studio but but yeah. your point about the the sound and kings of leon sound most of that it's it's more heavily leaning on instruments you know caleb's used the same guitar since the very first album you know a, a lot of the same amps and same basses and drums i've still got my first bass that i had since i was 15 years old so that is probably a little bit more important than the studio studio you're kind of just going for vibe and hope that they have good enough equipment that you know you can record on it by the time people watch this or listen to this mustang will be out what what goes into picking the first single to release but who all who all makes that decision not, we, not me. I kind I, I usually kind of back out of that once it start. Once it goes from the process of creating, and then it goes to the all right. What is going to be successful commercial? That's when I kind of start to feel a little dirty. So I kind of like I let other people uh, make those decisions. Jared's big on that. He can kind of he can listen and not. Uh, I've I've taken a couple of swings and misses, so I've taken myself out of that one too. But now the the goal, the dream is to write an album that there's nothing on there that you would be embarrassed. If there's something that you're like, oh, I don't want that to be a single, then it probably shouldn't be on the album. You know, so sex on fire. No. Oh. <laughs> Caleb wanted it to be a B side. Um I, I think you use somebody too. I yeah. use I, I can usually sense when something has potential and I'm like, don't put that on the record. Yeah, that was the only bad part about this album is he had no B sides. So we're like, damn it. <laughs> no. But you, you, the record label are it's a collection of smart people, you know, like and they do this for a living and they know what's what. So you just hope to give them an album and you're proud of the whole thing and you like every song and they're all your kind of babies and you say look you tell us what you think should be the first single and just go with it having said that though we made the album without a label so yeah when the new label came around um with you know their ideas and suggestions um luckily we're all like yes we're on board with it because there's that part of me that's like wait do you, we didn't make this for you you know we made this for us. Why Why would we listen to anyone else? But it was one of those things that when we finished the album, I really felt like it no longer belonged to us. And we got to enjoy the best part of the process. And now it belongs to the world. And uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. I've, I have a good feeling about Mustang, though, because it's just, like I say, I feel like it's time for people to kind of let loose a little bit and have something to uh, make them move. And, and it's definitely got that. Yeah, it says, are you a Mustang or a kitty? I'm thinking, oh, you football use the horses. Got to get it back. When we're playing LSU, Missouri, Northern, Missouri, Missouri. There's so many kitties on the <laughs> schedule next year. Are you a Mustang or a kitty? I love it. Now, let me ask you this. When you've got the finished product, it's done. It's been engineered. They've mixed it. It's done. And they're sending it for your final approval. Where do you listen? Do you listen at home on a good set of headphones? Do you listen in the car when you're driving around town? Like, where do you do your final listen to give the thumbs up? Or do you even do that? I do exactly both of those things. I've got like some good headphones that I listen to, and then I listen to my car. 
And then honestly, sometimes I'll listen to it on iPhone just to kind of see yeah. if they, because a lot of people are just casual listeners. Um, what yeah. have you listen? I I mean, I've in the past had trouble listening. I one of those things, once the process is done, it's kind of like I don't want to hear it. Um, and I would you use think like, about like second guess some decisions you made or what? Yeah, just kind of like, you know, you, well, you guys have a, you hear your voice back, right? It used to be like on your answering machine, you'd hear yourself and be like, that's not me. I sound like that. <laughs> and that's kind of how the music was always for me. But this one, it was the first time that I, you know, I kind of hesitant, I was hesitant to listen. And when I listened to it, I was just so proud. Like I was, I have this. In my house, I have about a half a mile little walk that I do um, in the mornings. And so I used to do that walk while I was writing, while I was thinking about, like, what what should we do? How can I take this? Blah, blah, blah. And so after the album was finished and we finally got it sent to us, I had, like, some little headphones. And I went on that same walk. But it was a real full circle moment. <clears throat> this is a little embarrassing, but... It was a full circle moment and I was listening on the very walk that a lot of it kind of came about. And when I heard it, I actually dropped like to my knees and like cried. It was strange, but it was one of the first times where I felt like so fulfilled. I was like, oh my God, like I, I just felt like, man, we really did it. Like we really had a goal and sometimes you have goals and it's just like, oh, it was that close. It was that close. If only I could get off the field against Kansas, we would have won. You know what I mean. <laughs> um, but it's like you, you had those moments. And this one, I was like, man, we we finished the job. And I could feel it. And I was in the place that it was born. Um, so, yeah, that was kind of how I listened to it. I didn't make it very far without crying though <laughs> i i'm fired up now full disclosure i've heard a lot of the album and i'm very very excited but mm -hmm. I, I, hey relax now <laughs> this is the last music question i, I have i'm gonna play it for you buddy yeah this is the last music question i've got and then we could talk some football touring is so important now from what i understand uh for musicians you guys have announced a tour, uh, U.S. tour, European tour. Just with how excited you are about this new music, does that make touring more fun? Like having the positive vibrations, as you guys have talked about this. Do you, are you just, does that make you more excited to go out and, and go through some of the pains that come with touring, but just with how much positivity and excitement you have about this album? You have no idea. Yeah. It's like we are so stoked. That to me is kind of like when the whole thing bears fruit. You know, you work in the studio and then people get to hear it and then you get to take it out on the road and play those songs live and you get to just start over. It, it's really, it's like a full roster turn, turnover. Um, and those songs take, uh, they have a different life. You know, we play songs now from album one two three whatever that were kind of album tracks and when we start them in a live show it's like a big moment because those songs even though they never were on the radio never hit the charts <clears throat> they people have lived with them and so they are something new you know every time you hear it it's part of their life and i text the guys uh yesterday i think because you know it's you start to see like reactions and I was like, Hey guys, let's not, let's not uh, let ourselves get worked up over the instant reactions. And like, let's not focus on that. Like we did our part time to move on. Now we go and create the live show that no one's ever seen. Now we go to the next phase, you know, instead of sitting here, like this is their, this is people's time to live with the music. We know what the music is. Now let's take the music and amp it up for the live show. 
and we've got ideas and very lofty goals set for ourselves and um and i know we're gonna pull it off because we're not gonna stop until we do but i i can already see what the beginning of the show looks like i think and it's gonna be it's gonna be crazy it's gonna be fun well when you picture the show what venue do you picture it in do you have like a favorite place that you guys have played or played multiple times there's a few really special ones. I, say, I think when you say Hyde Park, because I'm coming to the Hyde Park show. <laughs> Hyde Park is up there. I mean, I was going to say Kane's Ballroom, but we'll go Hyde Park. Nice. <laughs> no, the Hyde Park is sick, but it's different, you know, because you're outside and you're dealing with natural light. You know, the sun's still up, and then you get the sunset in the middle of the show. So that does change some things when you're thinking about. Uh, the show that Caleb's probably talking about that we're going to have, you kind of think arena, dark, like your forums in LA, Madison Square Garden, stuff like that. In that world, you know, those are all something where you we're can... not playing Madison Square Garden, though. So I probably shouldn't have said that one. Not yet. <laughs> Next I mean, year we're yeah. doing seven nights, though. Yeah. Um, but yeah, those kind of things, you can control the elements. So in your mind, you're like, oh, this is what the backdrop would look like. But I mean, if you're talking about just like stuff that you can't control, the venues that come to mind for me are like the Gorge mm-hmm. in Washington. Obviously, everyone loves Red Rocks because it's kind of a built-in look. Um, but yeah, Hyde Park is de- you know that's on the bigger side of things where it's like we don't really control the weather in London, mm-hmm. um, and you can well, only see the first you know two three hundred thousand people, exactly. and then it's just a blur. We don't control the weather in London, but we do have the people. So we can play the big places there. Um, and they'll be drunk and love every second of it if we suck or not. So, <laughs> Well, that's that's awesome. Now, OU football. MGTF. Yes. Guys <laughs> talking football. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> nice. That's good. Oh, Fans who have like just been going 15 second, 15 second, 15 second, 15 they'll, second. They'll they'll talk about it eventually. They'll get to OU Texas. They'll get there. They'll get there. Oh, it's still about you, music. If you scroll at the bottom, they have like the little things to uh, show you what's next. We watch yeah. on or, or listen on different platforms. Yeah, when you guys go on your basketball rants, I'm like, I don't follow the thunder Come on, that man. Come on. I'm sick of hearing about Porter Moser leaving or getting fired or something. I'm like not from you guys. You guys are always very cordial, but I look at a lot of other things and they're like, oh, he's out of here. Are you? I don't know. I like him. Let's, let's like keep nice it guy. to football then. <laughs> you, you guys, as long as you, uh, I've known you, you've been big OU fans, but both of you feel like you're as into it as you've been in years. Why? Why, why, why the resurgence? I don't, I mean, I feel like everybody kind of like fell off maybe a little bit around, around the COVID time. I think that probably with a lot of sports and just, you know, like a heavy time and you, you didn't know if they were going to play in the empty stadiums and things like that. So when it did come back, it's like, we're back, you know, and everybody got back. And for me, it's just something about Brent, um, what gets me in, I'm a big recruiting guy, and Brent is a big time. He's great recruiting. We have not had defensive recruiting in so long. So seeing us sign five stars on the defensive side of the ball is just like, okay, I'm back. I feel like I'm playing NCAA football, which I will be in a couple of months. But like pulling five stars on defense with PJ and then Peyton Bowen and uh, David Stone this year, It's 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 a – it's a new we have, era. We have a lot of good recruiting coaches. Um, mm-hmm. I could just rattle off your Brandon Hall. So, like everyone's just like killing it right now. But also Jared and I, you know, Kings of Leon, everyone considers us an Oklahoma band because we grew up, you know, in and around Oklahoma. Matthew and Nathan are born in Oklahoma City. Well, Jared and I are born in Memphis, Tennessee. So there's that part of us that does have that SEC kind of 
we had to we've always had to answer as why Oklahoma wasn't you know why they could make it to the game but not finish and all this stuff and when BV showed up the promise of a defense was like finally we can go sit down at a restaurant and not hear some idiot who's a Tennessee fan or a Arkansas fan or Mississippi Arkansas or South Carolina or Arkansas fans. I get into for some reason, the biggest fights with ever. They think that they are, but whatever go on. But anyways, it's like, now there's that feeling of like, well, first of all, we're in the sec now, but we're not just here to be in the sec. We're here to shock the world and have, a top defense in the SEC, and man, I am so fired up. and And I know it's a process, and I'm not one of those people that's like, if you don't do it in year one, you know, I'm disappointed. Like, I enjoy the process, and I look at our career, and it's the same kind of thing. You have your big moments, and then you have those years where it's like, what is happening? And then when you get back on top of it was like, oh, those were necessary years. Like we had to have those to get back here. So those years of complacency or having a coach that was only about offense and didn't care how many points people scored on us, like those were necessary because we're turning a page and OU is about to be the dominant football program, university. I mean, we already got softball and everything else. But we're about to be the dominant program that in our hearts, we always have been. Um, and it's about, we're just about to show the world. Giants I'm, waking I'm up. fired up, man. It's going to be fun. Now, are any, uh, any sentimental Big 12, like, we're going to miss it at all? Or is it, we're done with that, we're on to the SEC 100%. You're going to miss any of those, those uh, rivalries or anything? It's not the rivalry as much as it feels like the Big 12 is wholesome. It's like got a little bit of a Midwestern. Everybody's just kind of the whole town rooting for your team. We're in the SEC now. It's dirty. Like like I say, we're from Tennessee. <laughs> we know the South is dirty. And this isn't going to be your, oh, don't put your horns down. That's not going to be the case. This is going to be we're fighting in the parking lot. Um, and hopefully, you know, the fans are ready for it. I'm fired up for it. Um, but yeah, there is that Midwestern kind of big 12 thing that, that I'll always hold, you know, a part of it. Um, but I hate them. I, I'm excited to not have to go and play some of those teams. Yeah. I, I don't, I, we're, we're holding them up. I, I never, I don't like Texas tech and Baylor and, and all these teams, I don't want to play them again. I don't need to, you know, like they, we were there. Now we're playing on kind of an even, uh, 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 even playing field where it was like, that was all they wanted to do was beat us. We were the, the walking target for all of those yeah. teams. Bedlam you'll miss for sure. Um, well, Teddy, back in your day, the, was it the big eight then or big 12? Big 12. It was big 12. Well, wow, that, he thinks no, you're no. so old. Well, I don't remember when it was Big 12. I don't remember when it happened. I don't remember when the change happened. Yeah. Uh, I was around for, I was I was a fan of the Big 8. And they had plastic helmets when you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But what I was trying to say is when you guys won the Natty, the Big 12 was stacked. Mm -hmm. Since then, I'm a firm believer that in the still sharpened still. You get to a place in a conference where it's just not – you don't have that strong competition. So We've even – sleepwalking best, is what I said. We've been sleepwalking. Absolutely. Yeah. Even the best teams have those little slip-up games. Well, now you're going into a league where it's every week. It's like, all right, you got to put your best stuff out there, which is how it was when you were doing your thing. And I really believe, even if we take – our lumps here and there, it's going to make our football team dominant because we are going to have to step up to to the challenge. 
Oh yeah. Looking at looking at last season, what what was your guys' favorite moment? I know you came to the UCF game and that one was a little tighter than we wanted it to be, but what was what was your favorite moment of the 2023 season for the Sooners? Uh, I mean, Texas gave me the flu. Come on. I I literally got I don't know if it was the flu. But that game stressed me out so bad. And then winning and screaming at the end of it got me sick for like a week. <laughs> I told Martha, I was like, I think I'm like really just worn out by that game and woke up the next day. And I was like, no, I have the flu. That game just knocked me out of commission. But it was the. Oh, remember it forever as the flu game. That's your flu game. <laughs> no, I mean, there, there's nothing better than that. I don't think I've ever, I haven't been that happy in so long coming off of 49, nothing. It's like you, we needed that the program needed it. And then Stutzman, Mr. Communion himself, just like that, that whole video that came out of him in the locker room. It was, it was a real highlight of my, my fandom, much yeah. less the season. Same for me. Um, I mean, there were so many great moments uh, a lot of them were just kind of like we snuck by with Billy's pick six and uh, BYU, right? Mm -hmm. um, but the Texas game, I was at my farm. I have a five-year-old son. He was only four at the time. And my daughter is 11. I mean, my office is all OU stuff. It's kind of, I, we used to, I used to make fun of like, we'd go see our dad and stuff and our uncles. And I was like, it's funny, like when they wake up in the morning, it's just like, which OU shirt am I going to wear today? <laughs> it's not like, hey, let's, I'm going to put together an outfit. It's like, and I mean, when you show up to family reunion, it's like, ooh, where'd you get that shirt? Oh, look at, you know. So my kids, my daughter especially knows I'm a Sooner fan. But the way that the Texas game unfolded, the noise that was happening from me, the sounds that was happening for me. Um, and just a lot of me looking at my wife going, oh, babe, we got a shot. We got a shot. We're going to win. We're going to beat them. And my four-year-old son, after that game, the next three days, we had to watch the game again. So, like, we would start. He would wake up and be like, I want to watch Oklahoma beat Texas. I said, you're damn right you do. <laughs> and we watch it every day. And so now the whole family is just locked in. Right. That's awesome. Now, what about this upcoming season? W what games have you the most excited? Obviously, some good home games, Tennessee, uh, South Carolina, Alabama at home, and then road venues at LSU, at Auburn, at Old Miss. There's some good God. stuff to choose from. It's incredible. Uh, Tennessee is going to be huge. For I, I, Is it the first SEC game? Yep. yep. I think so. We're from Tennessee. We have a lot of friends who are Tennessee fans, and they were, were big talkers. And then we, when we beat them two times in a row this decade, um, they kind of quieted them down a little bit. But um, we have a lot of Ole Miss buddies. Yeah. And they want us to fly down because they're convinced 100% that they're going to like beat us badly. Like, well, not yeah, one of I mean, them. If I spent nearly $20 million on my roster, I'd, I'd be convinced too. Yeah, but I I hear I hear LSU is like hostile, and it's like I want all the smoke. Let's go. I'm not I'm not here to hide and you know wear a a t shirt that doesn't say that I'm an OU fan because I'm scared if we lose I'm gonna like I say get beat up in the parking lot. I want all the smoke. It any games that we can go to, I I want to be there. And I think OU Texas. I mean. We're coming for them again. I think we're gonna. I think we got a repeat victory there. And if we, we're putting our schedule together right now, but in my mind, I think Kings of Leon should be playing a concert in Dallas the night before the OU Texas game. I think it's gonna happen. Welcome everyone. Ooh. And and, and we said the football team drinks on the house. For Texas. Yeah, Texas. <laughs> as much alcohol as they want. Yeah, we're going to give steroids. Yeah, anything they want. Free. Come on, you come meet the band. <laughs> we'll take you on the bus, keep you there till 3 in the morning, whatever you want to do. Ted, that could be a rough broadcast for us the next day. 
Uh, yeah, yeah. We'll I'll figure like it out. I do think, though, that if you got in a fight in the parking lot at one of the games, the ticket sales for the tour would just go through the roof. I mean, that's the type of publicity you need when you're out on tour. That would be great. They would, as long as the people we're fighting are our height, weight, and oh, below average say, fighters. Yeah, we could pay someone to get their ass kicked. We could, <laughs> yeah, that's easy. The caddy from Happy Gilmore, Caleb's shaking him <laughs> in the parking lot. Now, Jared, like you mentioned, you're a huge recruiting guy. As we look forward to the 2024 season, what what player or couple players that are new additions to the team are, are you guys most excited about? I, I love the defense. Uh, I, for me, it's just you kind of with Jackson being young and the O line questions. You kind of everybody's banking on the defense being good. You know, you kind of have to, and you brought back so much. Um, so it, it, I, I would love to have an awesome defensive team. It win games, freaking fourteen to three. I don't care. Um, but yeah, yeah. Stone, Jaden Jackson, though. Jaden guys. Jackson is is a guy that I just think he could be a sneaky guy. David Stone, everybody, you know, you're all looking at him, but I, I have a feeling Jaden Jackson could be sneaky good. Um I, I the the running back, man, that would be a dream if he just came out, Tatum, if he just came out and got playing time and actually, you know, it was just like a little spark, kind of like you know, when Derek yeah, think- was a freshman and was behind. Ingram, I think, or I think Devon Mitchell is going to get get on the field and pretty quickly uh, stand out. Um, I mean, you know, we're we're talking about Hyde Park and our British fans and everything, Ooh. so I I think the bruv is going to show up too. Daniel I, I, I can cool me. I can cool me. And Daniel Coyier, also another guy, I think is going to. Oh yeah, and I'm also He's a freak. I'm also high on Andy Bass. I know he got injured and stuff, and this won't be a season, but I'm high on him. Um, Quarterbacks could be good. Is it Michael Hawkins? Michael Jr.? Hawkins, yep. Zerberg, you know, you never know. Those guys could. It, Jackson gets hurt, you're going to have Michael Hawkins Jr. out there. Mm, Who do no, we have left? Casey Thompson. Booty? Casey, oh, Thompson. Casey Thompson. Forgot about him. Now, did but, you guys panic at all, like a bunch of people did at the bowl game? with the turnovers and stuff and change only, your... only about what people would say. I was just panicking, thinking about all my sec buddies <laughs> just <laughs> going like, this is your guy. Cause like, I mean, I, I give it to them a little bit, you know, like asking them, I'm like, is Jackson dart staying around? And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, good. I want him. <laughs> I, so I knew I was going to get it. I got a lot. I had a lot of positive. Sorry. Oh, oh. Uh, we've got a new addition. He's just floating around in the back there. I love that. Hi, <laughs> um, Nathan. What was I saying? Uh, were you panicking about oh, no. Arnold? Yeah, not at all, man. I saw, I was seeing only positives. I expected there to be like some hiccups. I didn't know Arizona was great. I feel like OU has that thing where we play a team and then it like awakens and then like the next season there people are talking about them. I was like yeah everybody hated on them when they beat OU but now it's you know worst case scenario they beat us looked incredible and then lost their coach yeah. and so now next year they'll go seven and five and people will be like that team beat you no they still they still got Fafita and those guys but but yeah I didn't I I've, I've felt very positive coming out of that game except you know Obviously, Farouk had, you know, little butterfingers, a little bit. Uh, but the only fear that or anything that the seeds of doubt that are planted is just like, can we finish? Can we finish these games that we get? And I know we we ended up winning some close ones this year that we wouldn't have won the year before. But I, what I would love is for OU to finish before the end of the game. So that we don't have to sit on the edge of the seat every game, go like, ah, oh, we did it. You know, yeah. I want to just dominate somebody. Yeah, some people like those kind of nail biter games. I hate them. I love blowouts. God, 
Yes. Well, boys, I got I got bad news for you. I don't know how many SEC blowouts there are gonna be. We <laughs> that may okay. just be life moving forward. Well, we'll get Vandy on the schedule soon enough. That's the dream, dude. I I I I think we manifested OU to go to the SEC just so we can play an away game at Vandy and have all our buds come to Nashville. That'd be a fun one. I'm I'm coming to stay with you for the entire week. Yeah. That what that would be 2025. Hopefully Vandy is a road game. We should have them on the schedule. Texas plays at Vandy this year. So I can't imagine they would send Oklahoma. It'll probably be Vandy at OU next year or something. I hope not, but well, Ted, you you come stay with me, buddy. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah. yes, boys, <laughs> you have successfully flexed your OU football knowledge. You just basically listed the entire roster, including the pretty recruiting good. class. That was uh, that was pretty impressive. But <laughs> guys, I'm fired up, man. Just hearing you guys talk about how excited you are for the new music, I, I can't wait for people to hear it. What May 10th full thing, yep. full album will be out. Yeah. Check the tour dates. Go buy tickets, people. Come on. Oh, yeah. Appreciate the time, boys. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, guys. guys.